Hi hey everyone, this is Nathan here with the ebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give a comparison review between the Kindle Paperwhite and the Nook Touch with Glow Light. So, uh, first, let's go ahead and talk about the lights since they both have the front light. I'll turn this light off here, we can get a little bit better idea how the front light looks. Both of them have the light turned up all the way right now. Uh, both have adjustable lights. So, with the Nook, we've got a little button right here. You can hold the button to access to turn the light on and off. And you can actually adjust the light by hitting right there. So the Kindle, it doesn't have an option to turn the light on and off. We go in here into settings. Uh, even when you go all the way off, the light is slightly on just a little bit, which I find a little bit strange. But um, otherwise, you can adjust the brightness right there. And you got the brightness adjuster right there on the Nook. So you can adjust the lightness, the brightness of the light on both of them. Uh, so the Kindle it has a wider light, as you can tell. Uh, the Nook has more of a bluish tint to it. Uh, the Kindle also has better coverage. It's a lot more uh, uniform around the whole screen, whereas the Nook, it gets kind of spotty right here. You kind of got some shadows right here at the top. Uh, the Nook has the lights located at the top. You can see the light layer a little more. Uh, the Kindle has the lights at the bottom. Uh, you can't really see the lights unless you tilt it down there, but uh, it still does have sort of discoloration with the shadow right there. As you can see, it's not as much as the Nook. So the Kindle Paperwhite definitely has the advantage in the aspect of the light. It's just a little bit better done as far as the color goes and as far as the coverage goes. So uh, as far as hardware, the Nook has the advantage because we've got some physical page buttons on each side. You can use the page buttons uh, or you can use the touch screen. So the Kindle doesn't have any page buttons whatsoever uh, and it doesn't have a home button or anything. So you get to the home by uh, accessing the menu up here and with the Nook you can get to the home by pressing the Nook button right here and then you bring up the secondary settings and you can go to the home screen from there. So as far as memory configurations go, the Nook has the main advantage because it has a micro SD card slot so you can load in pretty much anything you want. Uh, the Kindle doesn't have any memory expansion, it comes with two gigs of storage. So when it comes to the home screens here, we have sort of a similar layout. We've got the recommended picks at the bottom. Uh, with the Nook we can go over to the library view uh, and then with the Kindle you just swipe over and then you get uh, additional view here and you can also uh, sort by a list. The same goes with the Nook if you just want to view the list instead of the book covers. Uh, we've got that option on both of them. Uh, the Kindle has uh, everything uh, segregated into two sections. You've got what's on the device and then what's in the uh, cloud. Uh, your other titles that you haven't downloaded yet, so the ones on the device you have downloaded. Uh, the Nook kind of has the same deal, like uh, you can scroll through right here and then we've got the different ones that say download for the ones that are in the cloud. Or you can just go ahead and view your iCarved items as a specific list, it's sort of, sort of the same thing. Uh, so the Kindle has those sort of same different sorting options. You can view by books, periodicals, so we've got that same sort of deal here on the Nook. So, I mean, these things, these two devices are a, a lot alike in a lot of ways. Uh, the Nook, it makes the lending a lot easier. As you can see, they got these Lend Me badges on these specific titles. Uh, so if you can lend them, it's a lot more of a workaround on the Kindle. They make it a little bit more of a pain. But So with the Nook, you can go ahead and you know, double tap or hold down. Uh, so either way we can bring up the different options here and then you can read the reviews which is kind of cool. Uh, so with the Kindle, if we hold down on a title, we get those same sort of options. You can get the book description, uh, add to collections. So they sort of have the same deal with the collections. So the Kindle you can just create collections, add your individual titles to the collections. The same sort of deal works with the Nook. It's got a bookshelf. They're basically the same setup. So uh, let me go ahead and load up an ebook here and just sort of show the features as far as e-reading goes. So. As far as the text goes, I can tell you right here that the text on the Kindle looks a lot, lot sharper than it does on the Nook. Uh, the Nook, it has a 800 by 600 resolution screen. The Kindle has a 1024 by 758, so it has definitely better resolution, and you can really see it right now uh, in person. It's a lot sharper, the text is. Uh, the Nook, it's more bold, but it's more fuzzy. It's just, uh, it doesn't quite have the sharpness, the detail as the Paperwhite's uh, text, but uh, as far as the font adjusting options, we have the same sort of setup. Uh, we've got the same kind of deal. I mean, pretty much exactly the same setup. You've got different font sizes by... Um, so, when it comes to really small font, the Kindle gets the major advantage because uh, with the higher resolution screen, the font is just crisper and clearer. Uh, so, like I said, uh, we've got the same kind of uh, font, really. I mean, we've got six different options here on the Kindle. We've got six different options on the Note that are a little bit different, but uh, they're kind of comparable when it comes right down to it. We've got the same three line spacing options, the margins options, same goes with the Kindle. So, as far as the on-screen features go, the Nook, it, it's a little bit different because it doesn't just bring up the dictionary, you actually have to hit the dictionary. Uh, as far as the dictionary goes, it's not as functional either because as you can see, uh, you can't run searches for anything. Um, so when you launch the full dictionary in the Kindle, you can run searches. 
You can jump back and forth between different words by hitting the hyperlinks. So uh, the dictionary's got some more uh, advanced functionality in the Kindle. So both have the option to add notes and highlights. Both have sharing options uh, for Facebook and Twitter. Uh, the Kindle has some additional stuff in here. So uh, one option is you can uh, get translations from uh, specific languages. There's a whole bunch of different languages you can uh, translate from to and from. So the Nook doesn't have any kind of translation. So down here on the Nook, if you tap that, you get your uh, additional options here. We've got like the table of contents. So with the Kindle, you tap up there, then we get the additional options. So it sort of has the same deal, the same kind of generated table of contents. You can list your notes and your bookmarks up there as well. Uh, so with the Kindle, we've got those in a different section. They're up here in the settings. You can view your notes and marks. Uh, the Kindle it has this feature called reading progress. So this is a definite advantage for the Kindle. Uh, you can actually see how much time you got left in the chapter right here. It says 12 minutes left in chapter, uh, 8 hours, 17 minutes left in book. So it analyzes your reading speed and gives you an estimate. So that's a cool feature. I kind of like that. Another uh, feature you get on the Kindle you don't have on the Nook is landscape mode. So you can switch it over to landscape. For some reason they didn't add that on the Nook. Uh, you can get landscape if you root it. Uh, so that brings me up to another point. Uh, the Nook, it's a definitely more a basic device as far as, uh, you know, all the features go because it doesn't have internet, it doesn't have the, I mean, the web browser. It does, but it doesn't really work. It's hidden and it's not an official feature. Kindle, you've got the actual internet you can use for referencing Wikipedia. Uh, so, like, if you even just uh, highlight a word here, you can just check up uh, uh, Wikipedia, and so you can get some info on that. Uh, you don't have the Wikipedia option on the Nook, obviously, uh, unless you root it. Like I said, if you root your Nook, it's a completely different story. So I have my root, Nook rooted and I got this alternate Android home screen with different apps. So you can actually install the Kindle app, you can install other e-reading apps. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with this Nook. It even plays videos. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so as far as hacking goes, there's definitely a lot more features uh, on the Nook once you hack it. But uh, as far as the base functionality goes, uh, the Kindle does have the advantage as far as the advanced features uh, go. Okay, so as far as page turns go, let's go ahead and do a quick page turns test. I have the Nook set to partial refresh, so it's kind of an unfair test here. I have the Kindle set to full page refresh, every page. But the Nook goes really fast when you hold down the button. We don't have any kind of speed option with the Kindle. You can't go through pages really fast. You can just go as fast as you touch the page. Okay, so uh, one other advantage with the Kindle, uh, PDF support is better on the Kindle, but that's not good on either of them. I wouldn't recommend either of these for any kind of PDF reading. Uh, Kindle, we've got some games, so you've got these active content, these Kindle apps. Uh, it's not really like a big feature, but I mean, if you want to play games now and then, uh, the Kindle has that option. Uh, the Nook doesn't have any kind of apps, no kind of games or anything like that, uh, obviously, unless you root it. And then once you root it, you can install games. But uh, as far as the base functionality goes, uh, the Kindle has the games and the, the Nook does not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Uh, check out theebookreader.com for some additional information and additional tutorials and reviews on these two devices. Uh, basically, it just comes down to which, e which ecosystem you want. I mean, the Nook has the main advantages and it supports EPUB and then it like, has these page turn buttons. Uh, the Kindle has the advantage and the light is uh, more uniform, the background color is more white, and it has a higher resolution screen and then obviously the, uh, some of the extra features that the Kindle has. Uh, but it basically just comes down to your own personal preference. Uh, these are both good ebook readers. I like them both. Uh, obviously, the Nook, once hacked, it's like a completely different beast. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Uh, check out theebookreader.com, and thank you for watching.